Oh, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Wednesday, March 10, 2021. The Gospel for the day comes from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. So this is short. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you. Until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Do you understand that? It's something easy to understand. What is our Lord telling us here? You know, he sent prophets. He sent Moses, gave him the Ten Commandments and the prophets to try to, you know, uh, prepare people for the coming of our Lord. The prophets, of course, expounded on much of what our Lord has handed down through Moses, the Ten Commandments and the laws and the regulations of how, you know, the Jews are to, uh, to uh, prepare themselves for his coming. Okay? And when he actually came already, what did he say? Well, because the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes were accusing him actually of changing everything that they knew to be morally right, right? But what our Lord says here is, no, 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 no. I am not changing anything. I am rather bringing it into fruition for you. I am now showing you how to actually live up to those commandments that I had handed down through Moses and the prophets. See, I'm now showing you the fulfillment of them. But, you know, I understand because this is the first time that you're actually seeing it happening becoming fruitful before your eyes, whereas before it was just all, you know, uh, rules, 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 and uh, uh, you never really saw it in the flesh being manifested to you until now. I understand how you might feel, but let me assure you, let me assure you that I'm not changing anything. I'm actually here to fulfill all of those things that you thought you knew, that you thought you were living up to. I'm here to show you how it's really done. Okay? That's how our Lord, uh, that's what our Lord means here. Okay? So let's continue. Therefore, therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so, meaning teaches others to break the law, okay? He will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That is assuming he even reaches heaven. <laughs> okay? Even assuming he reaches heaven. Because if you violate the laws of God, especially in a in a in a spiritually deadly way through mortal sin, and you die with that, then sorry, you just lost your chance of heaven. Right? But if you broke the commandments and repented from them, were sincerely sorry, okay, well, you might still make it to heaven. But you may not be the greatest in heaven. You may be, in fact, the least in heaven. Okay? That's the way to understand this. Okay? It's not to think that, oh, everybody's going to get to heaven even if you break the law. No, 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 no. That's not what our Lord means. Okay? So we have to understand that in the proper context. Okay? Now, but whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So beautiful. Whoever abides by these commandments and teaches them, teaches them, will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay.
Now, I would like to think no one, no one in his right mind okay, would, would risk, would risk intentionally violating the commandments. Right? No one in his right mind would even think of, you know, gambling his, his eternal future and squandering his opportunity to inherit heaven by wallowing in sin, by wallowing and living a life of sinfulness. You are either ignorant, foolish, or really have given your soul up for the devil to manipulate. But nobody in his right mind would like to do that. Especially nobody who is sincere enough to have a, the interest of having a relationship with God and inheriting his place in heaven. Right? Then come to think of it, there's really no such thing as a small sin. There's really no such thing as Uh, uh, breaking a small commandment. Okay? Our Lord uses this metaphor of big and small just to help us uh, uh, understand and realize that yes, there are priorities, there are hierarchies in these commandments. right? Uh, but here's one thing I want you to understand. There's no such thing as a small sin when it comes to the person you are offending. Okay? In this case, any sin we commit, no matter how small, even if it were a venial sin, okay, is an offense against your own God. Okay? It is an offense against God. And anybody who understands and appreciates who God is will really cringe at the thought of even offending God in the slightest way. And what comes to mind is St. Dominic Savio, whose motto in life was Jacob, death rather than sin. Death rather than sin. That is the attitude of somebody who understands and appreciates who God is, what God has done for his life, what God continues to do for all of us, what God has done to redeem us from our sinfulness, dying on the cross, taking up our own burdens, okay? in order to save us from sin and and, and really prepare us to inherit the kingdom of heaven, which, which God the Father has prepared for each and every one of us. See? I mean, anybody in his right mind who understands that will really, really have a hatred, a serious hatred for sin. It's like, any child who appreciates what his parents are doing for him will not in the least conceive of violating any of his parents' rules, of, of, of disobeying his parents, of displeasing his parents. Only somebody who does not understand what his parents are doing for him will dare violate his parents' rules will dare to displease his parents and hurt his parents. Okay? Just think of that, of that comparison. Now what more, what more God? What more God? How much more, how much more are we supposed to be, I wouldn't really say afraid, but, but 
because we're not supposed to fear God, we're supposed to love God. So how much more? Uh, yeah, the, maybe maybe the right kind of fear of the Lord, right? Not afraid of punishment, but rather afraid of of offending God out of love for God. Like you don't want to offend your parents out of love for your parents. Not because you're just afraid of a punishment. Okay? Not because you're afraid to be deprived of something. Oh, so I better not disobey. No, that's not the point. The point is you would like to obey. You would like to do your parents' bidding. You would like to please your parents because you love your parents. That's the only reason worth living for. It is the reason of love. It is out of love and because of love. So the same thing is true with God. The only reason why we would not want to offend God in the slightest way. It is not to fear. It is not out of fear. It is not because we don't want to go to hell. Rather, it is because we are truly in love with God. Because we are truly in love with God. That is the only reason worth living for. And that is why, because that is the only worthwhile motivation for our living this life. Then we would not even conceive of the slightest. We are not going to conceive of the slightest reason to sin. Right? We would not want to sin. Not because we are just trying to avoid hell, but because we really, really genuinely love God. Love for God is the only motive. Okay? Love for God is the only motive. And because of that love for God, sincere, genuine, true, love for God, we will try our darnest not to sin at all. Now, of course, we know. <laughs> we know that, I mean, we're, we're broken creatures. We, no matter how much we try, sometimes it can be tough. But all the more, should we be trying, right? We should not, we should not be, we should not, consign ourselves to defeat and say, oh, okay, I've tried so many times, I'm really not getting it, I'm uh, okay, so I'm just going to give up. No, that's the sin of despair. That's wrong, right? But rather, precisely because you realize that you have a hard time, okay, being good, that you have a hard time showing your love for God in real terms, you have a hard time avoiding sin, well, all the more should you put the effort with all the more reason should you put effort. Because if you don't put effort, you already know how fast you're going to backslide. Okay? So you, put, you have to put your most sincere effort in improving yourself, in loving God, in avoiding sin. And what is the first effort you should put? It is not brute force. The very first effort you should put is the effort to pray. <laughs> the effort to pray. The effort to ask God for grace. So that you can put the effort to fight against temptations. Okay? So the first line of defense, so to speak, is the amount of prayer you put into Asking God to help you. It is the amount of prayer you put in asking your guardian angels, the saints, Our Lady, St. Joseph, to help you fight against sin so that you don't break the least of the commandments. And this is going to be our life because we will never, while we are on earth, come to the point of perfection where we will never sin we don't even think badly of others no, well you know i yet have to meet a saint who was free from all of that we will never be free from all of those temptations while we are on earth okay it is only by the grace of god that we overcome them 
by the grace of God. So the first effort we should put is to pray for that grace. The second effort we should put is to really now use the means. See? If God is sending us graces to fight against our evil tendencies and sinning, then now the second effort is put the means in place. Okay? Put the means. Put your own imagination at work so that you would do what is manageable within your circumstances to fight against temptations and fight against your sinful tendencies. Okay? So you have to apply both the supernatural means of prayer and the human means. Okay? The human means of arranging your life and arranging things around you so that it helps you fight against temptations. And the third effort, the third effort I would recommend we put in place is an effort of penance. Penance, penance, penance. Because you can be praying all you want. You can be putting the, the means uh, uh, to fight against temptation. But if you are not sincerely sorry for your past sins through penance, then your effort is incomplete. What helps the effort come full circle and really help you all the way around is if you have these three components in place. Prayer, apply the means, humanly possible, the human means. And third, penance. 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 Because doing penance for your past sins helps you purify your intentions of why you are doing what you're doing you're purifying your intention that you are only trying to do all you can to avoid sin and love god well because of love for god right not because of satisfying your ego and telling yourself oh look how sinless i am now you know because i'm putting all the effort huh? no it's good to be reminded that it's not all us and that we are doing this out of love for god and the best reminder is to do penance, to do penance for our past sins, to really do penance for our past sins. That is a very good reminder. Okay? So what are they again? Three things to remember. First, prayer. Second, put the means, the human means. And third, penance. Okay? Penance. And that wraps it up for us today. Ava Grace. Yay. Say goodbye, Ava Grace. Bye. 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 Have a good day, everybody. We'll hope to see you again tomorrow. Okay. By the way, uh, just a, a side note before we end. This video, particular video, is going to be delayed for 24 hours for posting on Facebook and on other well, maybe just on Facebook. It will be on other social media platforms. But if you see this a day delayed on your Facebook pages, it's because Facebook has put me on uh, on uh, quarantine for 24 hours. Okay? <laughs> because of uh, apparently I posted something that didn't agree with their community standards uh, related to uh, uh, COVID. So anyway, uh, it's going to be delayed on Facebook, but it's going to be on all the other channels on YouTube by today. Okay, see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh,